came out the Sunday after that incident took place, the Washington Post pointed out on the front page that the Muslims had nothing to do with the UN riots. And they quoted, in saying so, uh, the, the person who was at that time the commissioner of police in New York City. See, it's lies that the white man had spread about the Muslims to try and make you afraid of the Muslims or to try and make you think that the Muslims were a criminal element, uh, um, an uncouth element, and things that you would not like to be associated with. Also, they say that, they, I'm just clearing these things up and then we're going to get into what happened. They also say that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a draft dodger. No, he wasn't. He just refused to go to the army because he was a man of peace. He was a minister of a religion of peace. He was teaching peace. So he outright refused to go to the army. That's not draft dodging. That's intelligence. Here, before the grand jury. Because the coroner's jury is stacked against Negroes. The grand jury is stacked against Negroes. The press, the radio, the television, and the newspapers are stacked against Negroes. But please, the Los Angeles Police Department is stacked against Negroes. He is stacked against all Negroes, all except those whom he has appointed to high positions. The, contr the controlled press, the white press, inflames the white public against Negroes. It, the police are able to use it to paint the Negro community as a criminal element. The police are able to use the press to make the white public think that 90% or 99% of the Negroes in the Negro community are criminals. And once the white public is convinced that most of the Negro community is a criminal element, then this automatically paves the way for the police to move into the Negro community, exercising Gestapo tactics, stopping any black man who is in the, on, on the sidewalk, whether he is guilty or whether he is innocent, whether he is well-dressed or whether he is poorly dressed, whether he is educated or whether he is dumb, whether he's a Christian or whether he's a Muslim, as long as he is black and a member of the Negro community, the white public thinks that the white policeman is justified in going in there and trampling on that man's civil rights and on that man's human rights. Once the police have convinced the white public that the so-called Negro community is a criminal element, they can go in and question, brutalize, murder, unarmed, innocent Negroes, and the white public is gullible enough to back them up. This makes the Negro community a police state. This makes the Negro neighborhood a police state. It's the, it's the most heavily patrolled it has more police in it than any other neighborhood, yet it has more crime in it than any other neighborhood. How can you have more cops and more crime? Why? It shows you that the cops must be in cahoots with the criminal. The texture of the, of the hair that God pleased that God gave them so much that they'll put lie on it? <laughs> do you realize now, you know, brother, lie will eat a hole in steel and you know your head is not that hard. <laughs> Who taught you, please? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head?
to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask who yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you. in the bathtub and can't swim. <laughs> we don't steal, we don't gamble, we don't lie, and we don't cheat. And that also deprives the government of revenue. Because you can't get into a whiskey bottle without getting past the government seal. <laughs> You can't open a deck of cards without getting past the government seal. Here's a white man makes the whiskey and then puts you in jail for getting drunk. He sells you the cards and the dice and puts you in jail when he catches you using them. So he's against us because we fix it where he can't catch you anymore. We take the dice out of your hands and the cards out of your hands and the whiskey out of your head. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. Then the only time a Muslim really gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. <laughs> We will kill you for our woman. I'm, I'm making it plain, yes. We will kill you for our woman. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and place the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put in the direction of our women.